Welcome to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast series. Here we talk about all things franchising. What is it all about? Is it for you? How do you find the best one to own? And so much more. Now your host, Tim Parmeter. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the latest edition of Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach, and your podcast host. Today, we have another one of the In Their Words segments uh, where we get to speak to a Fran Coach client that has turned into a franchise owner. And no offense to all of our other guests, but these segments are my favorite one. Um, and hopefully today's guest doesn't, you know, ruin that for me. So we'll see. So uh, before we get to our amazing guest, a quick reminder of who we are. Fran Coach is a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals interested in owning a franchise. Uh, we are partnered now with over 600 franchises, spans nearly 70 industries. Frankly, I'm starting to lose counts, uh, but there's a lot. Our goal is to help our clients find the absolute best franchise for them to own. And the goal of the Franchising 101 podcast series is to help educate people on all aspects of franchise ownership. Now let's get to the good stuff and our guest, Joining us today from the uh, maple syrup capital of the world and a state that probably, I don't know, 90% of us could not confidently or accurately find on a map, which is the lovely state of Vermont. We have with us Mr. James Clark. James, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh, and you just went, now, are you actually in Vermont today or we skipped out of state for a little bit? Uh, today, I'm in Virginia Beach uh, doing the family vacation. Um, and nice. then headed back to Vermont for some maple syrup. Very, very nice. I must have missed the the, uh, the invite to Virginia Beach. So, uh, let's, so. well, it, it's a little cold compared to where you're at. So, yeah, well, pretty well, I say pretty much everywhere is, but it's 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 only going to be like a balmy, like like mid 90s here in Arizona today. So I I, I, I know. And it's and it, and it rained and we were, you know, like, I, I don't know, like we got to like, in fact, there's a. 50 50 chance my nine year old in the other room decides he needs something urgently while we're recording this. So, uh, yeah, he's, you know, under, under the blanket because it's so cold here today. So, it's the, the struggle, <laughs> the struggle is real. So, um, we, uh, I got a bunch of stuff to talk to you about and kind of hear about your journey uh, with this, but let's, let's start with the basics. Give us a little scoop on 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 James and kind of your 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 background and and a little bit of what got you here. Well, I uh, started in insurance, and uh, in 2008, I was like, I need a change. Don't know what to do. So I sat on the top of a mountain and thought about all the things I liked and didn't <laughs> like, and ended up joining the Navy. Uh, so I was in the Navy for about eight years when uh, I got out due to an injury. But I followed my then pregnant wife across the country to California to. Uh, to be a stay at home dad for a while. And uh, we now have three beautiful children. Um, but I reached a point where I needed a little bit more than that. Um, we were moving from Texas to Vermont and it was, it was then that we decided we had to do something different. Um, it was time to take a, a chance. Um, and that's, that's when I was drawn to business ownership um, because I kind of got used to being around the little ones all the time and I didn't want to necessarily <laughs> give that up. Um, and all of my skills heretofore kind of require going away for long periods at a time. So this seemed like the best way to achieve what I want, which is to do something useful, but also have time with my kids. Awesome. No, that is, that's fantastic. And way back to the beginning here, thank you for your service, eight, eight years, eight years in the Navy. And, and I think we talked about this in the past, like you, you had, you had one of those cool things where you can't really tell me what you did without killing me, I think was the, uh, the, the appropriate thing, right. You were, um, and, and, and I read all those bad, bad, no, I shouldn't say bad novels, but there are series like, you know, like you're the gray man or Mitch Rapp or what's the, the other one's on Amazon now, the terminal list thing. Right. So, yeah. um, uh, I'm I'm old, so I read. So um, so so no, so no, very cool. And your and your and your your wife's kind of in the same same uh, same area as well, a little bit too. Correct. 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 Awesome. No, I actually I met her while I was deployed to Cuba. Um, so we've we've been places and done things, um, and we were looking for. <laughs> 
a mix between a, a, a nice quiet life to raise our kids, but also some of that sense of excitement and adventure. Yeah. Um, well, welcome to franchising. <laughs> so, um, what, what kind of, you, you talked about kind of you know, the, the transition to, from in, in, into Vermont and kind of getting that point where you're, you're, you're thinking about this, but what, what got you like, why not just another job? Uh, what got you thinking about kind of re- really getting into franchising and having your own business? Well, it really came down to two things. One, uh, all the work that I am trained to do requires long hours away from the family. And that wasn't something I wanted to do, um, especially for something that felt less important than what I did previously, um, which, to be honest, is almost every job. I just <laughs> right uh, making somebody's quarterly quota doesn't justify uh, time away from the family um, in the way that having a mission in the Navy did. So. That was a part of it. And the other part was impact. Uh, where could I be most impactful? Um, I'm old. I've got three young kids. And so for the first time in my life, I'm thinking about community. How do I build that? How, to, how do I make things better for my children as they grow? Um, both on a family level, but also in a, in a community type uh, yeah, no, and I think that, that the, the, the family thing is key. And I know that's one of the things, I, and I've, I've talked about this a lot um, as we've gone through all these different podcast episodes is like the little dude in the other room, he was the, he's the driver for me starting this, what, seven, almost eight years ago now, right? Was mm-hmm. the flexibility, the freedom, the control over like, I, I get to, like, I get to, I get, I get to work hard building the business and and now we've got a couple of them. But still having that flexibility and freedom to spend spend some time. Like your yours are even younger than 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 mine, but he he's he's nine. He's halfway decent to hang out with still, right? Like yep. <laughs> t- teenage years, uh, whatever, right? But for now, like I, like I'm still kind of cool, and he's still kind of fun. So, and I know your yours are, yours are, yours are even younger, and and being able to spend that time with them is is. is is, is key. And so that's awesome. You've got that. And really with, we'll, we'll get into what franchise and, and how much flexibility you're going to have with that, but that's, but that's huge. Um, when, when we first connected, you had just kind of maybe done a, I think just a little bit of research into franchising and biz, business ownership. Um, but what was, I guess, when, when we first kind of started talking you had a, I guess, kind of a, a couple thoughts in mind of what what direction this might go. Um, how quickly did your mind start to kind of change? As like, oh, I thought it was this way, but it might be any number of other 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 ways. What was that transition like for you? So that transition happened fairly quickly, uh, and it was because of the work that that you asked me to do. Um, we had originally uh, rolled over one of our our retirement accounts to buy a purchase or purchase an already existing business in Vermont. Um, and when that fell through, we had funds, but we weren't really sure what to do with them. So I'd been looking at businesses for sale. Um, in that process, I made the mistake of signing up for more information on some franchises just to see what they were about. Uh, I didn't understand why they kept emailing me and wanting to talk to me uh, when I just wanted more information. So uh, I finally got tired of like having random conversations that, that weren't purposeful because I didn't understand what the purpose was. Right. Uh, and that's when I reached out to you and through your questioning, I was able to figure out what elements of business attracted me and, and really get a sense of what I both envisioned as a business owner, but what was actually possible as a business owner. The, the 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 questioning it's it's funny you say that like if, if I do questioning with my significant significant other that usually causes problems for me right so professionally I I get away with it so then I just do it a lot right um, and so we we did we kind of went through a couple things right uh, really built out the old what do you want to be when you grow up stuff and then we get you connected to franchises and I feel like we started with four at at the beginning. Um, and this is pretty typically the case, very different on the surface. Um, give me, if you can kind of think back to that, what were your, what were your thoughts? So like, okay, here's, here's the four. And there's many reasons why I do pretty much our whole process over the phone is one reason I don't want to see people's facial expressions 
when I'm introducing the franchises, right? Because there's there's an eye roll, there's a there's a there's some there's some bad body language going in there with with at least one of them. Uh, but what were your thoughts? If you can kind of think back to that with uh, when we did that intro. So you had asked me prior to providing me uh, uh, the list to to trust the process, and I'm not smart, but I'm wise enough now to. Uh, be coachable. So I was like, all right, I'm going to trust the process. And, and you gave me some options and I had to instant, like, Oh, that's the one. I don't know why we're messing with the rest. Um, and then some that it was like not in a million years, but, uh, going through the process, my, my understanding shifted, um, through the conversations that I had with the, with the franchisors, as well as our ongoing conversations, um, Keying in to what was important to me made it so much easier to to derive purpose from those conversations um, and figure out what it was I was actually looking for and which one was going to provide that. Yeah, and look, as I look as I go kind of go back through our notes and we talked about this. So here's 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 the in our case we did four right, and then afterwards I'm like, like it's the most unfair question I ever ask is like rank them right after that. I've given you I don't know like one one hundredth of a percent of everything you're going to learn. Um, and you were very definitely in the minority as this turned out, because the one you like the most is the one you own. And that like, I mean, maybe 10, 15 percent of the time that happens. Uh, but one of them was a was a was was a kind of an, an industry that you had kind of like when we were talking about industry was literally the first thing you talked about. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, we, but we kind of shifted off, shifted off of that pretty quickly. And so, um, even though you had that thought of like, well, this is the one, why am I talking to these others? You, you did. And I appreciate the fact that you, you did that. And, and uh, did that help kind of confirm that you were on the, on the, on the right track? Or was that just like a big old fat waste of time to have talked to some of the other ones? it absolutely helped confirm that I was on the right path. And the, the funny thing is at the end of it, I can still see myself doing any of those businesses. Um, they all had elements of what I was looking for. And one of the main deciding factors for me was I could see each of them being like a second or a third business. Um, right. But what I was looking for was more involvement. Um, and this is where it comes back to freedom. A couple of those other choices I'd have been involved, but I wouldn't have had the freedom that I was looking for. Right. Um, and that's, it absolutely helped narrow down what it was I really wanted because I had a list of things, but they weren't necessarily in the right order of importance. Uh, and going through and speaking with each one and getting a sense of their culture made it very clear. Yeah, good. Well, no, and and I again greatly appreciate your openness and the and the trust in the process because it's not. I think you'd probably agree with this. It's you're trusting the process that you're not really sure. Like, like <laughs> why am I, I why am I trusting this dude? Does he know what he's doing? What's this like? And then you kind of get to the end. And you're like, uh, like, oh, okay, it's, it's clear now, right? Mm -hmm. And so as you go through and the compare and contrast, I think is really key, which you kind of talked about too, but you get to the, you, you go through this and we really kind of narrow down and, and we go to, and, and yours was virtual. You go to that discovery day, that meet the team day, that kind of last little piece of it where you're, you're, and I don't know, four or five, six hours of, of, of zoom, like zoom hell, I guess, basically, right. <laughs> of, of with this, but with the entire team of the franchise, um, talk a little bit of what that, that day was like and how that kind of solidified you were, you were on the right track. So because of the work we had done, uh, you and I, and the conversations that I'd had individually with people within that company, I, I was certain that that's what I wanted to do. And really what the, the meet the team day was for me was the chance to, to get introduced to the other people I'd be uh, working with. So I got to meet the people who are going to be training me. I got to meet, um, you know, the CEO for the, for the second time. Um, so it was a chance to, to see the culture that I thought I was getting into in action. Um, yeah. and, and that really just 
it made it like slipping into a warm bed. Uh, you know, you just, it's just right. That's, that's the way uh, I, I'm from Vermont. It gets cold. You want a warm bed uh, in Arizona. It might be a cool bed, but you know what I mean? Warm bed. That's, Ooh, that's, awful. Like, that's awful. Um, yeah. We're play, trying to play Arctic freeze out in my house at night. So, um, so no, they, it really just, and again, kind of that, that confirmation of just like you're, 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 you're in the really almost more confirmation day than meet like again, any, anything else. So, yes. um, so, so cool. So, th- so that's kind of the journey. And then let, that led us to which franchise? Uh, focal point business coaching. Okay. So I'm putting you on the spot. I know you're just getting started with training. I want to talk about that a little bit, but what's what's the elevator pitch focal point business coaching james what is that please tell us more changing the world through business leadership and training uh Ooh. so essentially uh i have that was I that have, was good I, did, did you just come up with that or is that did you actually no, learn that no that's that's the company mission and that okay. that was that was what really sold me is the mission purpose and culture um they are clear from the top to the bottom yep. every coach i spoke with Every employee I spoke with, the CEO, they all had the exact same understanding of what those things were for themselves. Um, and that made it very easy for me to say, yes, that's, that's what I want to be part of. I'm, I'm trying to grow up and be you. I'm, I'm going to, to, to help business leaders uh, grow their business, um, fix problems in their business through, through the application of a methodology that will allow them to refocus focus on the basics um, through clear vision and understanding teams and understanding and having an exit strategy so that all this hard work they're doing uh, sets them up when they're ready to pass on the reins to someone else. Very cool. Um, no, and I, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a big fan of Focal Point and we've had Steve Thompson, their CEO, on a few a few months back, and and just you're not the first person to hear their their kind of their mission, right? And go, yep, that's me, right? Um, we literally had somebody a couple of years ago text me during like right, like, and they was this was pre COVID, so it was in person, so like he's sitting there on his phone texting me like. 10 minutes into the thing when, when Steve Thompson, their CEO is like laying out at the beginning, like, this is our mission vision, right. All this stuff. And he's like, we have a problem. I'm like, Oh my gosh, what? Like, we're like, we're, we just started out. <laughs> we have a problem. And he, and it was totally messing with me. He's like, they just went over the, the, the mission statement. Like, what's the problem? And he's like, like, I, I, I don't want to sit here the rest of the day. I'm like, Oh my gosh, why not? And he's like, this is the the mission statement is exactly me i'm sold let's go right so he was almost like disappointed that he had to sit there the whole rest of the day because of how well that aligned with him and the the uh, as a as a as as a business owner we own franchises too but fran coach was mine and created like from scratch like there's so many gaps i like if, if if a focal point coach came in to work with me and Fran coach, I'd probably be appalled at how many things they would find that need, need improvement. And I think just from a, from a coaching perspective, if you think of it, and again, I think that's the key thing with, with their, their terminology is coaching, not consulting is we, we all need a coach and like, whether it's a, you know, an athletic coach, a fitness coach, you know, a, a parent, you're coaching your kids. It's really being able to, to build that relationship in the community and, and with, with other leaders. And, and I know you're, I know you're going to just kill it with that. So I'm, I'm, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm super excited for you. Um, so you are just getting started with training. Uh, what's, what's that experience, but you, we, we can still see your head intact. So it's not fully exploded yet, but what's, all what's the that way. it's been like so far. So it's, it's been surprisingly good. Uh, coming from the Navy, <laughs> Training is something that you do because it's a requirement, but it's not always uh, the best. So, uh, our push-ups first, with focal point training? Not yet, but I'm going to see if I can get that uh, <laughs> added on to the curriculum. Today. Yeah, I'm texting them right afterwards to see if we can uh, <laughs> just just for just for fun start yelling and screaming, make you drop and and, and give us twenty or something. Exactly, you got to show motivation somehow. Uh, <laughs> Our first official day starts today. So um, 
prior to this, we've had a, a boot camp, and then we've had a, a couple of calls that really have just explained more in depth what the training is going to be, confirmed dates, gone over some of the basics in greater detail um, to prepare us to get the most out of the training today. And unlike my experience in the Navy, each iteration has provided more information, more detail without being uh, overkill. So it's, it's been a pleasant chance to kind of concentrate thoughts and, and meet some of the other franchisees who um, I'm going to be in their cohort all the way through training. Yeah. And I think that's always a, a, a cool aspect of training. It's, it's, it, and I'm sure we've had this, whether it's, you know, freshman, freshman in college or in the military, whatever, it's like your training buddies. And yep. as, as you found out with focal point, their owners are very collaborative, whether they've been, you know, franchisee number, you know, one, or it's, it's that group you're with, but there's, there's something special about that, that training group, right. That you get to, you get, you guys are going to be starting and throwing in the fire at the same time. So that's, that's, that's very cool. Um, and so you've got a couple more weeks and then kind of what's, what's our official, like kind of grand opening day, so to speak. So we're aiming for opening in, in September. Um, we've got, uh, a brief period basically now through the end of August is going to be the, the official certification. And then there's an ongoing, uh, at that point, 12 weeks of training. Um, so that's accounted for, but, uh, you're able to start conducting business as soon as you're certified. Everything that we're doing right now, pre-training is to get us up and running so that once we're certified, uh, we're ready to start doing, doing the work, uh, achieving that mission. Very nice. Um, and, and go figure a business coaching franchise has great business coaching for, for their owners. Right. So it's not just yeah. like, okay, here's the training. Good, good luck. Let us know how that goes right there. They're, they're right there. With, and like, and, and knowing these guys well enough, like they'll show up in Vermont at your doorstep. If you're, if you're not, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, um, I, I, I think I know you well enough to know that you're probably not going to be super lazy or unmotivated or whatever. And then even if you are before focal point got there, I'm pretty sure your wife would smack you upside the head. So uh, <laughs> well, the hardest thing for me is each phase of training comes with its own handbook. So it's not like they oh, wow. gave me the entire handbook so that I could read ahead. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm only given enough to focus on what it is they want me to learn because again, it's foundational, right? That right. success is foundational. If you don't set that right, uh, you you end up with problems further down the line. So yeah, uh, the, they're absolutely practicing what they preach, and uh, I'm getting getting a full heaping dose of it right now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, cool. Well, and I know I know you are one on vacation, and you took time to talk to us. So thank you, and getting started with training. So d- doubly appreciate that. Um, Last thing I'll let you let you go and run outside to the beach and hang out with the family. But um, you've you've been where people listening right now are where they are. Like, is this for me? What do I, like? What 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 should I do? How do I figure this out? What advice would you give somebody who's maybe you know again where you were three four months ago? Like, is this a path for me? What should I do? What 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 would what you tell them after going going through this whole journey? Uh, honestly, I would repeat people wiser than me, uh, (laughs) trust the process, do the work. And that that's not only the advice that I got from you, but from each of the franchisors that I spoke with, um, each of, in my case, the business coaches that I spoke with as I was doing my validation calls, trust the process, do the work. Um, you know, if I had continued trying to figure out what franchising was franchising was on my own, I would not have come to this decision. Um, and I'd have, I'd have tried to muddle through another business venture somehow without understanding, um, yeah. one that I'm the kind of person who benefits from a proven process <laughs> that I just have to apply. Yeah. Um, and to, without having gained a business understanding that I wouldn't have had as a civilian, um, yeah. you know, which is. It's, it's not about having all of the answers, but about being responsible. So, uh, you know, I'd have tried to have all of the answers before I did anything and I'd never have done it. Yeah. Uh, 
It, well, and and you 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 you've talked about this a couple of times. The, the trusted process, the proven system. That's the number one thing any franchisor is looking for is somebody that will follow a plan, right? Because that's the whole point of the franchise. They figured everything out. They have the proven system. Now, the the trick is finding the best one. Which you know, self serving comment here. That's what we we are here for to help people do that. But once you do is put forth the effort and follow the plan. And it's really that simple. And so people that will try to kind of buck the system and the plan along the way, usually don't ever get the opportunity to be a franchise owner because the franchise is going to like say, you know, no thanks. Right. And I think you're it's one of the two, two huge kind of broad backgrounds of people that do incredibly well in franchising. And one is military, right? Because, you know, from that standpoint, you you follow the plan or else, and something something really bad's going to happen. Um, and you you've got the discipline and the work ethic. Um, we found the right plan for you, and within focal point. So, like, don't don't deviate from that, my friend. <laughs> keep keep the, keep the effort and, and keep following the plan. And, and again, I know you'll I, I know you'll just absolutely kill it. So, um, well, thank you very much, James. Man, I appreciate it. Um, thanks for th- th- thanks for coming on and. Once uh, maybe we'll, uh, we'll we'll let you you know give you a little time, get your feet up and running, and once you got got things uh, humming along on focal point, maybe we'll get you back on and and uh, tell us tell us about that 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 journey of that first year or so because that's always like, a little little up and down along the way, but uh, I, but it'll be a fun ride. I'd absolutely love to be back and and tell you all about uh, the mistakes I make not following the process. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's you heard that in validation, I'm sure. Right. The 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 owners love to rat themselves out. Right. Oh, I do it. You know, if I did it all over again, I would do this differently. And it is almost always something where they deviated yep. from the plan, got smacked around a little bit, and just like franchisors and franchisees, it's like parents and and our, and our children. Right. It's like exactly. I, I I told you the stove was hot. Why did you touch it? Right. Oh um, no. So we got it. So go, go hang with your kids, my friend. And, and uh, we, we, uh, we look forward to hearing about your success with focal point down the road. Okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy uh, snuggling under the blanket with the little ones and uh, staying warm on a cool day. We'll, we will struggle today in the mid nineties. So, uh, um, so cool. Thank you. And, and as always, thanks for all of our loyal podcast listeners for tuning in. Um, you're here, you know, you have some interest in franchise ownership, reach out to us, brandcoach.net franchising101podcast.net. Um, there's never any fee for our service. So please take take a few minutes. Uh, let's get that first call set up and let's help you create your better tomorrow. Thanks everybody for tuning in and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast, where our ultimate goal is to help educate you on all things franchising so you can create your better tomorrow.